Hi, this is Bob Sorrentino from Italian Roots and Genealogy, and I'm here today with Margarita Di Crescenzo. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, her background and also the unique way that she teaches Grazie. Italian. So, Grazie. welcome, Ciao. Mary. Thanks for being here. Grazie. Piacere di, di essere qui con voi. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you and all the friends. Grazie. Uh, so, while we were talking before, you said you, you don't speak very good English. You speak great English. You do fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I say always to my students, you are learning Italian. I'm still learning English. So, it's a little bit of exchange. Change. We change languages. Exchange. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's good. And I'm still learning English after 70 years. So, there you go. <laughs> uh, so, so I wanted to start with a little bit about, you know, where, where, is your, where are your roots in Italy? Where's your family from? My family is from Puglia. It's the hill of Italy, so in the south. My parents were immigrants in Germany. When they were very young, after they married, they had two choices, Germany or America. America, America looked like a very far place to go. So my parents choose a Germany closer to Italy to come back. And so I was born in Germany because my parents went in Germany to work. And, but we did always back and forth. This is why I speak very good German and my first language, Italian. The first word that I hear was a German word because in the hospital. <laughs> but my parents were are Italian, so I have two mother la languages, Italian and German. Oh, and, that's, I that's good. and I teach both. Oh, that's Italian. great. That's great. Yeah. Grazie. This family is from Torito, near Bari. Torito, Torito, si, si, yeah. si. Torito, Torito, o Turi, Turi. So this is yeah. it. It's close to Bari. I'm yeah. from the opposite side of Bari. I'm from the opposite side between Bari and Taranto, but uh, not so far. And that's interesting you mentioned Taranto because I have cousins there ah. uh, that uh, I never knew ah. um, until just a little while ago. And my grandmother's, one of my grandmother's brothers, was an admiral in the Navy. Navy. And I guess there's a big Navy base down see, there. See, 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 see. What we have in Taranto is something very, very important. Is a base where all the ship, I don't know if in Europe, but for sure in Italy, they go if they need assistance uh, uh, before uh, go in the, uh, in the sea. So we have a big, big uh, base, naval base in Taranto and the famous Iron Bridge in Taranto. So it would be similar to uh, our big base on the East Coast is in Virginia. So it would uh, be similar to that, yeah? Yeah, in Italy, when they when they uh, speak about Taranto, they immediately uh, remember this fact, this fact about this big base, Italian uh, naval base that we have there. And even now with this uh, uh, Euro uh, Ukraine uh, war, we had many ships from uh, England coming in our port for uh, before they uh, went in the sea to uh, be assisted in our port. It was a little bit impressive to say. I bet, <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet. See, 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 very well, big. Mm. Well, my grandmother's brother, uh, apparently, he, he became an admiral. And I would guess, uh, I guess my cousin, and they, they haven't answered yet, but um, I would guess that was probably during World War II because, you know, he was 50-ish, I guess, during World War II. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I need to find out a little bit more facts about him. Uh, so now let's talk about how you teach Italian. And like I said, it's a unique way and it's something you developed yourself, yeah? Yes. 
I developed by, by myself because I use it to, I, I teach uh, Italian online and not since COVID, many years before. And I did all my sheets by my own. Before the lesson, I, I was ready always with a paper like this. Okay, with all grammar skills, words that we would use during the lesson. So uh, nearly two years ago, one and a half years ago, year ago, I thought to put together all these sheets and make a book. But just to make it easier for my students to don't have all the papers so and to collect, just to make a book. So I, uh, I started to get ready on my laptop with uh, all the tools to, to write, to do, and so I printed the book. I, I launched it on Facebook. To, uh, I print only 100 first time, just for my students, if someone is interested, just easy. After that, I saw that many, many persons, many people, many friends were interested because it's really unique. I don't know if you have seen in Facebook have, some yeah. pages. It's a calendar. It's a planner with 365 pages. So every day you have something new to study. Yes, I, and I did see that. So, so it, is it... Um, besides just studying it, do you use this planner to plan in Italian? Uh, you could. I have another uh, planner. I have another uh, another one, my personal. But it's a, a real planner, yes, with uh, with uh, space where you can write. For example, at eleven. I have to do this at 10, uh, I have the doctor. There is really a real uh, list of things that you have to remind to do during the day. It's useful two times to learn Italian and to get ready with uh, your day uh, on that page. So I will tell you, I've tried several times to learn Italian and I will tell you the toughest thing for me. The yes. toughest thing for me is you know the verbs getting the verb tenses correct and for example growing up you know my mother's body was everything was aspet aspet you know wait that but is aspet a... i always say to my students <laughs> it's an s aspet <laughs> right and and but but you know they were speaking the dialect and stuff yes. so you know i could get my way around the, the feminine and masculine that's where i really really struggle getting the verbs so how do you deal with the verbs? I say always to my students, mostly to the beginners, don't put yourself uh, stress on with, with verbs. We Italian, uh, we understand pretty good when you speak, okay? When you start to learn a language, what I... Uh, think is most important to be a sponge with words. Uh, when I started, verbs are important, but not so much. I give always a base. For example, to have to be and more does. I can, I want, I have to, okay. This for the beginning. We have to study this. After that, let your brain and your knowledge work uh, slowly because with uh, experience, you will know, like me in English, I know that I have to say if I'm speaking uh, about tomorrow, I don't have to say I wanted this. I have to say I will this. But this comes with experience slowly. Okay, and what I started is that after 10 lessons, for 10 lessons, a student is a sponge, has to keep words and simple grammar rules. After 10 lessons, the, start, the start, uh, student needs to take out what he has uh, keep in, simple sentences. Okay, so if it's struggle at the beginning, 
after 10, 15 lessons, it could start to work speaking. Okay, even if the word, verb is not correct, experience will give you the correct verb. Okay. Yeah, and so that's well, that's good to know because I, and I don't know why I, I tended to focus on trying to get that right. English. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I learned English in London only with songs. Oh, I really? went yes. <laughs> They didn't teach it us. You have to say so, uh, ex uh, exercises, put this, 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 this. They, uh, we went to the, uh, the Cambridge University there. Uh, we stayed three hours with uh, um, uh, a screen, listening song and writing what we were listening. This was the exercise without grammar. And I Bob, I learned so much. So I'm only listening the song. So, and it was at a university, uh, not Cambridge, Oxford. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's that's interesting. I've I've started watching now. I've started just to kind of get familiar. And obviously, when we were in Italy, you know, you're hearing the language all the time, and it brought, brought back so many memories, of course. But um, I've started now just. Just starting to watch Italian TV shows and movies, just to start to get that in my head. See, 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 it's good. And, and, and you know, they, they, um, a lot of times when you're watching a movie or a TV show, they're not talking rapid, you know, see. so you can pick up more see. of the language than, for example, when I was Italy, in Italy and people were talking very, very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They talk, we speak fast with, uh, with uh, as a speaking and hands. We talk, we talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, we do that here in America too. So as you, ah. as you know, Italian American, we, we, we talk with the hands a lot too. And, um, and it's funny that you mentioned music because, you know, on a trip, uh, especially in Fasado and Montebello, um, they had uh, a group, uh, folk singers. Mm. And uh, it was just so great hearing it. The difference was, and I didn't realize it, Gina was singing one song. To me, it sounded Italian. And I play a little bit of guitar, and I said, well, I want to learn how to play this. So uh, it was only, it's only three chords, so it's simple enough to learn. Mm -hmm. But then I asked him for the words, and he sent me the words, and the words are in, in Calabrese. And it's, and it's nothing dire. like Italian. <laughs> It was dialect. Oh my goodness! Oh, <laughs> good God. a little um, bit tough. Uh. Well, my wife said, "How are you going to learn that?" And I said, "I think what I need to do because he has the song on YouTube." So I said, "I think what I need to do is listen to it while I'm looking at the work." And I learn regular songs like that, just singing along. I said, "But I, I need to get now that I have the words in front of me, as he's singing it, I can read the words and start to put it together and." Hopefully I'll be able music, to figure it out. Music is a big, big help. In my planner book, uh, I have the text, uh, I am uh, Volare, Modugno. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a simple song, and he spells the words very, very uh, good, and it's a good exercise. I think songs help more than TV, because TV... It's that moment, okay? And you have to see this movie 10 times, many times, okay? And it's boring just to read, watch and read. But a song, for example, if you put in your car, in your phone, a song you can repeat as many times you want. It's not getting boring about a song like a movie, I think. So if you pick, for example, one, two songs and you listen many, many times and then you repeat singing, it's a good, good exercise to learn. And you know... I that's interesting because I never thought of that. Yes. Um, because I was in a band and that's the way I would learn the songs. I would put Music. the song on in the car yeah. Yeah. and just sing along with it. And the funny thing about that was when we wrote a song ourselves, those are the songs that we would forget the words to because 
We thought they, we thought we knew them because we wrote them. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, okay. And you'd be in the middle of it and say, yeah. Oh, no. And in the words, uh, you are speaking about because you are a musician, so about your uh, your experience. But it's a really a big help, a big big help. I could say Georgia uh, is a good Italian singer that spells the, uh, the words very very good. Tiziano Ferro, even he speaks is a man uh, very good because you cannot take all songs because we have even uh, not some dialect not all singer spell all the words good for for us uh, teacher we have many uh, uh, singer that we prefer for example Tiziano Ferro and Georgia are good good to learn all the songs uh, of the these writers, songwriters, are good, helpful. And so they're more they're more modern then, yeah. Uh, see, 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 yeah. see, see. And another thing, they don't um, don't sing fast. Yeah. They don't sing for a little bit. It's not. I could not say classic. They don't have a fast rhythm. So this is why I prefer this two singer because they sing good but not fast fast lyrics. So you have the time to listen and and uh, try to understand. But the first time you have to listen with the lyrics in front of you. Yeah, yeah. You sure, have to sure. read the lyrics and then again listen and sing and sing like volare how many americans person know this song volare yeah. eh, it's famous <laughs> it's famous <laughs> uh, yeah and they're the, every italian american from my generation knows all those old standard songs because our aunts would be singing them all the time you know <laughs> say, um, say, say, so say. so now you also mentioned that you do online now do you do online classes with students and how does yes. that work Yes, yes. Uh, I teach on Skype uh, um, because on Skype I can write a lot. I prefer Skype, but uh, on Zoom too. We connect, we do one hour, I share my, my paper. We, uh, people that uh, connect with me have already the book, so we study on the book, exercises. It's like to be in, in real, in person. I live in Italy, so all my American friends, uh, they have to be online. Uh, only when I'm here, I have my students now here in person. But when I'm in Italy, we do online. Right. And where do you? What, so where do you live now in Italy? I live uh, in uh, Taranto. Oh, and you live in Taranto? Oh, okay. No, now I'm in now, New York. Yeah. No, right, now but you live, I... but you're from there, but you live there. Yes, no, I live in Taranto. I, uh, I'm based there. I'm Italian citizen, uh, but. Uh, now, until 16 September, and I'm uh, in New York. I have this big uh, course, 10 or 20 lesson course here in Italy, uh, in New York in person. I came here for this course and I have many students and it's, it's nice. It's nice to, to teach in person to my friends. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure. Well... When you're back home, if you come across a Piramalo, that's my cousin. Okay, okay. <laughs> <So> my cousin. <laughs> so we're hoping the next trip next year we're going to visit there because I want to go up to Torito. Torito, uh, eh, and near Bari, yeah. uh, uh, So we didn't we didn't get there this trip. So next trip, I definitely want to go there and see uh, see my uh, grandparents' hometown. See, 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 and, and for sure we will we will meet. Yeah. Taranto, yeah. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> uh, and my great grandparents, the, the house is still there in in Puglia, so. See, 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 see. Interesting. So, so for anybody who um, wants to, you know, get online courses or get the planner or uh, get any of your other uh, documentation, how would they go about doing that? I have my website. Learn and shop Italian with me. I will give you the link. There you can uh, uh, buy the lesson and all the tools that we need. But to have uh, to have lesson with me, uh, you are not obliged to pay to buy the book. 
okay? It's not something that goes together. Uh, I teach even without the book, okay? I send pages, I send uh, materials to learn. It's a big help to have in common a book, but the student is not obliged, okay? And what else? Uh, it's an exercise book to, uh, that helps a lot because after we have this lesson, I give some exercises and they have uh, answers uh, too so they can check how good they are going on with it. And the audio book too uh, because learn Italian is not enough one hour, two hour a week. I cannot make miracles. I cannot, I'm, I'm still, uh, since I'm not a saint, I cannot make, make miracles. So I say always to my student, it's not enough. If you really want to get in a language, you have to use a lot of things, songs, other books, and listen. So this is why I, I, I use, uh, I get, uh, I had this USB stick. So you can listen my voice, even in the car, driving, I read, and you can repeat. So study, see, but even listening and repeat. A big help to, uh, to be more closer to a native, a native Italian person. Uh, yeah, no, and, and like I said, um, I really need to learn for more than one reason. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to start with the planner. I promise <laughs> you that. And, and we'll, we'll take it from there. But this has been very uh, educational and interesting. And um, we're going to get this out there for anybody who wants to learn Italian. Io ti ringrazio. I thank you. Ti ringrazio per questa possibilità that you gave me this opportunity to share uh, what I love to do. I bring always, uh, uh, I don't know if I have some pages, some groups in Facebook. I share my language, acknowledge, knowledge, but I share, I say always, Italy. Italy. Mm. My, mm. my second lesson is uh, this is funny after the the lesson that we have the language lesson i uh, i explain to my students 20 things that you don't know about italy 20 things my second lesson not the first the second lesson uh I, I tell my students 20 things that you don't know. For example, the simplest thing that we don't eat salad at the beginning of our meal. This is a, a not so big deal, but many say, really, you don't eat salad? No, we eat salad with meat or fish. And other things, thing, things that people cannot expect to know about Italian people. And so I teach language and I teach culture. Yes, that's and that's important. And one of the things that we certainly learned, you know, when you talk to Italian Americans, we, we I mean I grew up saying I was Italian, right? Yes. And and uh now I don't. I mean I'm obviously an American, but I have to say uh to people, if you haven't gone whether you're researching or not, or you, whether you know the language or not. Uh, if you're Italian-American, you have to go at least once in your life, and not just to Rome or Florence or Bravo. Venice. You Bravo. have to go to the little town like behind me because that's where the real Italian people are. And it was just so eye-opening to us, the, the, the affection, the love. And they were so... What amazed me, I think, more than anything else, was how much they wanted to connect with us and how happy we were to see, go. See, 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 see. Back to the heritage, I say always. Rome is wonderful because we have history there. Positano is okay. But add your roots, add in mm -hmm. your trip, even only one night. I say, where are you from? Sicily. 
just one night where your uh, your uh, parents came from just to see just one one i say this always to my my friend just one day okay add this in your trip because you really like you said you it's unexpected like people can say oh my god he came here from from america and we are a lot friendly in italy so oh so friendly. <laughs> so friendly <laughs> and you know to your point we um uh, my my father's family before they came to America they lived in in Naples, and we stayed in the historic district. You go out onto the street, and you're you're brought back hundreds of years. You're walking on cobblestone streets that you you know, gee, my grandmother probably came down the street in a horse and carriage, or you know, Same. my grandfather was selling something over here. It's the way it was Same. hundreds of years ago. Same. Say, 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 say. And if from one side big cities change it with time, small towns, like you say, they haven't changed at all. They change just a little bit, okay? But Italy is in small town, yes. Yeah, and, and again, for people listening and back to that whole cultural thing, when we were in uh, Fasado, they put out a, a lunch. Sí. And everything was made there. See, sí. the, the, you know the 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 ham. I said I've never tasted. You know, we think we have Italian ham here. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm eating Italian here. I'm eating Italian in New York. It's not. That's not. And and I said I've never tasted anything like this. And they told me. Well, we make it the same way we made it hundreds of years ago. We kill the pig December 26th and we cure it for till March and now you have it. And the cheese was made there and the wine was made there and the bread was fresh and the, the, the olives were cured there and they gave us a big gallon of olive oil to take home. It was just <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. And, yeah. and, and that's, you know, that's the real Italy. It, it, you know, I have a secret, Bob about this why our meal are more with taste with i have a secret that secret that we know in italy it's a rule in in, in the italian i'm writing a, a book about uh, recipes i'm right my next book is about recipe this is oh, why yes. say people ask me here how do you cook this for example because they they want to know how I, I cook it today, melanzane ripiene. Do you know what this is? Well, I know melanzane is eggplant, but what's Staffet melanzane. Oh, okay, stuff. Yeah. Staffet okay. ripiene. And I say there is a rule in that we have in Italian meal cooking. We use only when we cook four or five ingredients. That's mm. it. That's it. I, I, I ordered it in, in a restaurant, for example, lamb. I don't remember now what it was. Where was the, the meat here? It was all, <laughs> all things. Mozzarella. <laughs> wait, wait. In Italy, we use four or five ingredients according to what it is. Parsley, salt, pepper, oil, and if there is, uh, you have to add a tomato, salvia, uh, but the base is four or five ingredients. This is why you taste chicken, because mm -hmm. it's done very, very uh, simple. Not so much stuff on that you, you ask yourself, hey, where is what I ordered here? <laughs> this, hey, where is? I have to, to take out all, all the stuff to see the meat. So it's very simple how we cook. Very simple. And, and that's interesting because in Capricota behind me, si. when we went to the restaurant there, the, the chef made, he, he made a meal you know, not exactly, but to bring out what the shepherds would eat when they brought the sheep from Elise to Puglia. Same. And to your point, it was very, very, I mean, it was fantastic, but very, very simple. Yes. Yeah. And yes. Um, for example, the pasta had, 
you're, you're right. Probably four ingredients. There was yes. pasta and there was definitely some butter in there and truffles and not much no, else. No, butter not. Butter not. We don't well, eat butter. Well, it, it tasted More. like butter. So maybe it was some kind of... It was oil or... Maybe oil maybe was... Oil and sometimes we used um, cream, uh, milk maybe, cream. That, that maybe milk that's cream. what it was. Maybe that's what it yeah. was. Um, the, because it had that kind of thing, but and the same thing, yes. he made a sheep stew. I'm not a big sheep si. person. Si. Very, I'll send you the picture. Very, very basic. Cooked for eight si. hours. Yes. Eight hours he cooked And um, and that's what he said. He said because they didn't have, they were on the on the road there, going from one part of Italy to the other. They didn't have the ingredients. There was no refrigerators or anything like that. No refrigerator. <laughs> and neither all these exotic ingredients. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, 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 for us, it's simple. Alloro, the big green leaf. I don't know in English. Alloro. It's a big uh, green uh, dry leaf. Alloro, parsley, onion, uh, garlic, uh, pepper sometimes. And... Then comes the the final ingredient uh, uh, could be tomato, cheese, or what else. But this is simple, simple. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, that's that's what we that's what we found, and it was like I said, the the best. I think the best meal that I enjoyed the most was up on the mountaintop in Fasado because it was it wasn't just the food; it was done. It was done for us, and the and the people there, they spent the whole day with us, from ten o'clock uh, in the morning until six o'clock at night, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and like we were, like it was a big family party, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. friendly as we say, friendly, yeah, friendly yeah. Italian person people, yeah. um, and um, yes, and they didn't mind the Americans encroaching upon their territory, so it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, uh, just nice. Um, well, this has been this has been great, and um, the goal yeah, here is to get more people, especially me, to speak and understand Italian. I will do my best, and even improving with my tools. Um, I, I have always something new. Crossword, for example, I'm writing a crossword book too to uh, put uh, playing and learning this cooking book i'm always looking for new tools to help people uh to study and to keep and to better the language because uh, i don't have only uh people that start to learn italian i have even people that want only conversation to keep vivid the language mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have for all uh, all people that want to speak Italian. Okay, great. And well, I'm going to look forward to the cookbook too. So I see. As soon as <laughs> I finish, as soon as I finish, it will be every day uh, a recipe. Every day, like like the same, like the planner book, three hundred sixty-five oh, page. Yeah. Every day, uh, it could be uh, meat, fish, or pasta. Oh, great. Oh, yeah. That's great. A big, right, well, big, big, big work. All right. Well, thanks again. Appreciate it. Grazie. Grazie, Bob. A presto.